Hello and welcome back to Spartan Student version 9. Today we're going to be going through tutorial number 5, which is spectra properties and graphical models of organic molecules from quantum chemical calculations. So to get to that tutorial, as always, you'll click the activities menu, bring up the tutorials menu, and you will see this fifth one, spectra properties and graphical models from calculations. So click that and it'll open a PDF. I've already got it open in another window here and we're quickly going to sketch acrylonitrile. Oops. Alrighty. So now what we're going to do is click on the calculations button to set up a calculation and we're going to run this equilibrium geometry calculation in gas phase using the density functional theoretical omega b97xd at a 631 g star basis set we're going to click submit it's going to ask you to save the file and it'll start calculating i'll come back to you as soon as i have the results all right so that calculation just returned going to click OK and we're going to open the output summary so we're going to click this output button and we're in the summary tab already and you can click on any of these arrows to open a table we can look at molecular orbital energies and we can change how many we'd like to look at with the LUMO drop down menu at the top and the HOMO drop down menu at the bottom. I'm going to close that and we can look at atomic charges. So we give those in natural, molecular, and electrostatic charge. And you can look at the calculated bond orders in ludens and molecans. Now, if you wanted to look at the output, this will expose the details of the calculation that went on in the background. So you'll see that we've got a omega b97xd calculation using the 631g star basis set and also the optimization you can see that it completed in three steps and there's tons of other data available down here and finally if you get to the bottom you'll see some molecular orbital information and successful completion now if we were to bring up the molecule properties dialog, you'll see that we've calculated the data here. You can check this dipole vector to display the dipole. And you can, from within this, click on any atom and look at the atom properties. So for example, let's say you wanted to look at an isotope of nitrogen. You could change this from 14 to 15 here and you can get the electrostatic of each atom that way as well. Okay, so I am going to deselect that, close this, click surfaces, and add an electrostatic potential map. And you'll see we've generated this surface. I'm gonna right click, click properties, and reset the min max. And you can look at the property range in kilojoules from very positive to very negative regions at a legend so that you can click and see where you are relatively and change what style as well okay so I'm gonna close out of this and close the open dialogues and then I'm going to build cyclohexanone so this one I am going to build in 2D by adding cyclohexane and double bonding an oxygen there. Bring that into 3D and we've got cyclohexanone. I am going to set up an identical calculation to the last one that we just did and click submit, save the file and allow this to run. 
I will come back to you once it's completed. Alrighty, so that calculation has just returned. What we're going to do now is go ahead and take a look at the LUMO surface. So what I'm going to do is click Surfaces, Add, LUMO. And you'll see that that was very quickly calculated, and this will give you an idea of the least unoccupied molecular orbital, the, excuse me, the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. Now you can also add this absolute LUMO map and turn that on and you'll see the areas that the LUMO are correspond with that carbonyl. So if I were to go to the surface properties and turn the legend on and click here, you would see that that is close to the max area where you'll where you'll find the uh, the LUMO. All right, so we're going to close out of this and we're going to move on to something we sketched in the second tutorial, which is 3 cyano 4 methyl cyclohexenal radical. So what I'm going to do here is click carbon, double click there, add a methyl group there, and this time, let's see, let's go to groups and let's add this cyano group like this. Then I'm going to click radical, double click there, and we'll bring that into 3D. And we are going to set up the same calculation. However, you'll notice here that since we designated the radical, we see that there is one unpaired electron. And that's important for the calculation. So I'm going to save this and go ahead and let that run and I will come back to you in just a moment once that's completed. All right, so that calculation has just completed and we're going to take a look at some unique surfaces here. So the first one that I'm going to add is the spin density. Then I'm going to add a spin density map. And then I'm going to finally add this alpha homo. So the first spin density map represents spin density as a surface of constant value and the second uses color to map the value of the spin density onto an electron density surface. So we're going to take a look at the spin density map first and you'll see these regions with spin density. And then if we uncheck that and check the map, and you'll see these blue areas represent the same. I'm going to make sure that this is right. There we go. OK, so the alpha homo will be the highest occupied molecular orbital of an alpha spin. and this is the orbital that contains the unpaired electron. So it's operating in this orbital. OK. So if we were to select the spin density map, and then go to properties. Oops. Spin density maps properties. And then we can click on more surfaces. And then we're going to click slice and click OK. 
and uncheck that, and that'll give a slice of the uh, alpha homo surface. And then what we're going to do is with this plane, we can rotate it and move it. To look at the different areas. Now you can also click on this and oops, we can get a sphere or a cylinder and look at it this way and if you hold shift and the right button you can rotate this And you can zoom in or out to change the size, which is an important feature. All right, so that's going to do it for today. Our next tutorial is going to be number six, called Groups of Organic Molecules. And we will see you then.